before we start our lesson for today, I am inviting all of you to join us in a magical learning experience at home. Enroll now at Vibal's Happy Homeschool Program. You can find the details at the description part of this video. Hope to see you there! It is our ability to work or cause change. We cannot see it or hold it, but its effects can be seen or felt, and we call it energy! Hi everyone! Welcome back to another episode of our Scientific Friday! I am Teacher Janelle and I'm on a journey to discover the different things around us. Are you ready to join me again for our lesson? Come on! Have you tried rubbing your hands together when you feel cold? Or hold a cup of coffee or hot chocolate to make your hands warm? Have you tried walking in a very dark room? Can you easily move and see the things around you even if it's dark? Can you try closing your eyes and listen to the sounds around you? What can you hear? For today's lesson, we will know more about light, sound, and heat. In this topic, we will explore the following. What are light, sound, and heat? What are the sources of light, sound, and heat? How do light, sound, and heat travel? And what are the uses of light, sound, and heat? We know that energy is very important to us. Because energy allows us to perform our daily activities. And you know what? We will know more about the three forms of energy. These are light, sound, and heat. Let us start discussing about light. A while ago, I asked you if you have tried walking in a dark room. Walking properly in a dark room is difficult because you cannot see the objects around you. This may cause you to trip and fall. This shows how important light is. Do you know what light is? Light is a form of energy also known as radiant energy. Light enters our eyes to let us see the things around us. We can divide the sources of light into two the natural and artificial sources. When you wake up in the morning, you can see the things around you without the help of a light bulb. This is because the sun is already up. The sun is a natural source of light. Here on Earth, the sun is the primary source of light. It can produce its own light. Other examples of sources of natural light are fire, stars, and fireflies. But how about the moon? The moon is not a natural source of light because it only reflects the light that comes from the sun. When there are power outages, your parents or guardians use flashlights as sources of light. Flashlights are examples of artificial sources of light. Other emergency lighting devices like clamps are also examples of artificial sources of light. They can be operated using batteries or electricity. Artificial sources of light are made by humans. Now that you know the sources of light, you might be wondering how light travels. There are two ways on how light travels. These are reflection and refraction. Let us differentiate the two. Try to look in a mirror. What do you see? Correct! You can see yourself. This is called reflection. This happens when light bounces back from a smooth surface like the mirror. 
you can also try looking at your reflection on the surface of a water. Let us move to another way on how light travels. Get a pencil and place it on a glass filled with water. What have you noticed? The pencil looks bent when you look at it from the side of the glass. This is called refraction. This happens when light travels through different materials such as air and water. Good job in understanding on how light travels. But did you know that not all materials will block or let light pass through it? You can group these materials into three depending on how they interact with light. These materials can be opaque, transparent, or translucent. First, let us discuss opaque materials. Objects like books, tables, coins, and bags block light. A shadow is formed on the block path of light. Can you give examples of opaque materials around you? Let us move to transparent materials. These materials let light pass through them. Examples of transparent materials are windows, glass, and eyeglasses. Can you give examples of transparent materials around you? And finally, translucent materials. These materials do not allow all light to pass through them. They block a small amount of light which makes them look dark or blurry. Translucent materials include frosted glass, dark sunglasses, and stained glass. Can you give examples of translucent materials around you? Now that we know what light is, we can now proceed to heat. Have you ever gone to cold places like Baguio? Or even a very cold air-conditioned room? You usually rub your hands whenever you feel cold. Sometimes, you feel like you want to drink a hot chocolate drink. But why? To keep yourself warm. Heat is another form of energy. You can feel it when you come close to a hot object or when you expose yourself to sunlight. Look around you. Can you identify different sources of heat? As I mentioned earlier, Heat can be felt when sunlight hits you. The sun is the main source of heat on Earth. The sun's heat keeps the Earth warm enough for living things to survive. Have you ever tried sitting near a bonfire during a camp? What did you feel? You felt warm because fire is also a source of heat. Burning objects emit heat. A lit candle also emits heat. Appliances in your home such as flat iron, microwave oven, and electric kettle also produce heat. These are powered by electricity. And when you turn them on, they emit heat. The heat from the flat iron can be used to straighten clothes. Microwave oven cooks food, and electric kettle heats up water. Let us now identify the three ways on how heat is transferred. When you place a metal spoon on a bowl of a boiling water, the heat will transfer to the metal spoon. This process of heat transfer through a solid material is called conduction. Have you seen your mother cooking food for lunch or dinner? Some cuisines start with boiling the meat and vegetables. The heat from the boiling water will be transferred to the vegetables and meat for it to be cooked. This another process of heat transfer is called convection. The last way to transfer heat is through radiation. The heat of the sun radiates through space 
until it reaches Earth. Radiation does not need solid or liquid material to transfer heat. Heat can help us in our daily life. Like what we've talked about earlier, it helps us cook food, keeps us warm during the cold days, dries up our warm clothes, and it helps keep the earth warm enough for all living things to live. Now let us move to our last topic, sound. Are you ready to know more about sound energy? Let's go! When you are at home, what sounds do you usually hear? Is it the sound of a television or radio? How about when you are outside? Is it the sound of moving vehicles or barking dogs? We know that sound is also important to us like light and heat energy. Let's get to know more about sound energy. Do you know how to play a musical instrument like a guitar? Have you heard someone play it? A guitar produces sound when its strings are plucked or strummed. This causes the string to vibrate, which sends sound into the air until it reaches your ears. Aside from air, sound can also travel through solid and liquid objects. Sounds also have their own characteristics. Some sounds can be described as relaxing or soothing. These are called pleasant sounds. On the other hand, some sounds are irritating or painful to hear. These are called unpleasant sounds. How can we produce sounds? Sounds can be produced naturally or artificially. Natural sounds can be heard from living things like animals and plants, as well as the environment. Examples of these are the sounds from animals, rustling of leaves, blowing wind, and raindrops. On the other hand, artificial or man-made sounds include the sounds from musical instruments, airplanes, cars, televisions, and music players. Sounds are useful because it allows us to communicate with each other. It helps us understand the people around us. Sounds can also help cheer up a person. Creating pleasant sounds using musical instrument is a good recreational activity. Sounds can be also used for medical purposes, like using ultrasound to check the baby in the mother's womb or see if the internal organs of a person are healthy. There you have it! We just learned a lot about the three forms of energy. Make sure to remember what you have learned today whenever you use these forms of energy. Before we end our lesson for today, I am inviting you again to join us in a magical learning experience at home. Enroll now at Vival's Happy Homeschool Program. You can find the details at the description part of this video. Hope to see you there! I hope you learned a lot today and apply these learnings in your daily lives. Join me again for our next Scientific Friday and together, let us discover things around us. Because science is everywhere! This has been Teacher Janelle for Teacher Vibal. Goodbye everyone!